Next topic is uh, namespaces, XML namespaces. So here we are going to talk. About, we are going to talk about the uh, the need for namespaces. Why namespaces is needed for XML, and then we are going to see the syntax of namespace, and we'll talk about the concept of default namespace, and then we'll talk about the concept of target namespace along with uh, source namespace, and then we'll talk about how to, how to import XML schema with a schema location. So let's talk about the need for XML namespaces. So if you have written any Java programming Java programs, you know there is a concept of package, and the package in Java programming space provides uh, the namespaces, uh, so that there is no collision. Even though you have uh, classes, they might be uh, they might have the same name because they belong to different package uh, packages. Uh, there is no there is no possibility of collision and that's the same thing for same reason why we want to have XML namespaces so XML document could use multiple XML vocabularies meaning XML elements and attributes and there could be a uh, possibility of name collision okay uh, for example XHTML document might contain XML elements from both SVG and MathML and in fact both SVG and MathML has set element and uh, cell element used in SVG is different. I mean, they should it should be semantically different. It is semantically different from a set in MathML. So there is a possibility of name collision like this. So we need to avoid this name collision through the use of namespace. So this is an example where uh, element called the title uh, have a uh, the uh, name name collision. Okay, so this is RDF file, and we have in this case in the in the in the RDF uh, the uh, file uh, title is basically title of the web page. Now in the painting, so we have an another title. So this is the title of the painting. So this title and the title in the previous slide they actually mean different thing. Okay, so that is an example of name collision. So if you are not using namespaces, uh, one way you can do is changing element name to avoid. Okay, but this is not a convenient option, especially if you are not the owner of that element. Uh, some collisions are inevitable because they are defined by standard bodies. For example, SVG is a standard and MathML is a standard, and both the standards define a set element as one of you know one of the uh, valid elements. So if you're using uh, SVG set and MathML set in the same XML document, then uh, there is no way that you are going to avoid a uh, name collision. And the grouping names is useful anyway. So, uh, you know, for example, XSLT processor needs to know which are the XSLT instructions and which are res uh, result tree elements. So don't worry about these things. We are going to actually talk about XSLT in detail later on. So in general, grouping names is useful anyway. It's in the same way, you know, grouping Java classes into package is useful. Okay, so pretty much same reason that we have uh, the packaging on the Java, you know, we, we have the same need uh, for XML. All right, so the uh, um, so <clears throat> so this is a case that we are using namespaces in the same example that we have seen. So as you are going to learn later on, this is the way that you define your namespaces. So here we define uh, RDF namespaces like this, okay, and uh, and then we also define another uh, the uh, namespace here, okay. Uh, so and uh, the namespace. Uh, is actually reflected through what is called the uh, prefix and uh, each element will have uh, this prefix so this title uh, belongs to a namespace defined with this prefix DC here and anything that start with the RDF uh, this description and uh, I think that's the only one here uh, this description element belongs to this RDF namespace okay all right all right, so let's move on to understanding the syntax of namespace. So namespace is made of two parts. One is namespace declaration, and uh, then uh, the uh, elements and attributes are going to use this namespace. So namespace declaration is made of this syntax, XML and as keyword, colon, and prefix. And uh, this prefix is basically reflecting a URI. So 
the uh, this is an example where we are declaring a namespace. So this is the uh, namespace. The syntax of namespace is in the form of URI, okay? But it doesn't have to be resolved in a real URI. You know, it doesn't have to be a valid URI. It just happened to be the value, the syntax they decide to use as a value of the uh, the uh, namespace. Okay. All right. So this uh, prefix is user defined meaning you can use any name of your choice I decide to use XML class in this case uh, however XML NS this is a keyword okay so here by saying this what you're saying is that I'm declaring a namespace whose value is this URI form and uh, the uh, and then uh, any elements and attributes that belongs to this namespace is going to use this prefix okay because usage of this long URI is very inconvenient uh, you know the reason the prefix is used is to reflect this is you can think of is like an alias of this namespace okay so any attributes and elements that belong to this namespace should use that prefix okay <coughs> so can be declared namespace can be declared in a root element or low level element in fact you can declare namespaces in any level in your XML document uh, in fact, multiple different namespaces could be defined in a single document. So that is an example that we have seen here. So we define two namespaces here, okay, here and here, okay. We'll see more examples of this one moving forward. Some prefix can be redefined within a same document, okay. So uh, uh, the uh, the uh, you know you can use the same prefix XYZ in multiple levels even though this is not recommended practice it causes some confusion uh, however syntax wise is allowed okay uh, what that means is that uh, the uh, so the uh, scope of namespace declaration is within the element where it is defined let me explain what that means okay so let me actually use this example so this is one namespace declaration right so here uh, the uh, is defined on an element, so this element belongs to this namespace. That's the reason it's using its namespace right here. Same thing here. So we are defining namespace of this, and this element belongs to this namespace. So you know, in this case, this is actually belong to uh, the uh, this description belongs over here, but everything inside belongs to uh, this namespace. Anything that actually start with a DC belongs to this namespace. <coughs> Okay, all right. So uh, the uh, examples of namespace usage here. This is a prefix, and this is an element. So this is the SVG namespace, and this is the uh, element. This is MathML prefix, and uh, this is an element. So these names could be anything you want, even though uh, SVG, the convention is using SVG, and MathML convention is using MathML. So the syntax is a prefix colon local part. Okay, uh, local part meaning element or attribute, and uh, so together it is named. Together it makes up what is called the qualified name. Okay, so in web services, uh, if you actually uh, hear qualified name, that means it's combination of this prefix and local part. So prefix can be composed from any XML name character except colon and uh, uh, XML is reserved so you cannot use XML as a prefix okay uh, local part uh, also cannot contain colon uh, so namespace URI so URI cannot be a prefix okay uh, and these characters slash percent sign and tilde are not legal in XML lemon names so you cannot use them and URI could be standardized. So industry organizations, uh, you know, as you are going to see later on, like a SOAP standard or WSDL standard, they actually defined the namespaces as part of their standard. So SOAP has a set of namespaces and WSDL has a set of namespaces and web services security specification has a set of namespaces. Okay? So as I said before, these URIs are just identifiers. Uh, so it doesn't have to be uh, in HTTP form even though this is typically the case and URI does not have to be resolved so you can think of it more or less constant value happen to be the taking the uh, the, uh, the syntax of URI 
Okay, moving forward. The concept of default namespace. Default namespace is declared with XML and then uh, XML NS attribute with no prefix. Okay, so uh, it's applied only to unprefixed element and its descendant element. So let me explain uh, default namespace using an example. So having prefix in many elements in your XML document is a chore. Okay, so if you happen to have an XML document where most of the elements belong to a particular namespace, you might want to actually use a default namespace. So this is a case. This is XML document, and you don't actually see a uh, prefix in your XML document, even though XML document is supposed to be a valid XML document, right? The reason is because it's using default namespace. Default namespace is a namespace without any prefix. Okay, so in this case, uh, and any element which doesn't have a prefix belongs to this namespace. So in this case, any element which doesn't have a prefix, in this case, HTML, head, title, body, h1, and uh, then p, and hr. Uh, so these guys uh, all belong to this namespace, default namespace. Okay. However, there could be only a single default namespace. So any other namespaces, in this case, xlink has to have a prefix. So if you are using an element, an attribute that belongs to this namespace, then you have to use xlink. So let's see if you have any attribute here. So this h reference attribute and the type attribute here uh, belongs to this namespace. So you have to have a prefix of xlink. Okay, here. All right. Now we have another example of names default namespace. So if you happen to have a sub element in which you are going to use a lot of elements that belong to this namespace, in this case SVG namespace, uh, like Eclipse, Rect, or Width and Height, then you might want to declare another default namespace. And this default namespace is valid only within this SVG here. Okay. So any element inside this SVG element, SVG, Width, Height, Eclipse, Rx, Ly, uh, X and Y, Width, Height, these all belong to this default namespace. Okay, you can certainly actually not use a name, you know, default not not use the default namespace. For example, you can actually have a prefix here, like uh, XML NS colon SVG. In that case, everything should be prefixed with the SVG. So this one should be SVG colon SVG. This one should be SVG colon width. This one should be SVG colon height. Okay, but that's more typing, right? So in that case, you know, you might want to use the default namespace rather than explicit uh, namespace. Okay, example XML document. So this is the uh, palm.xml file of Maven. So this is a genuine XML document. So you can see examples of namespaces. Okay, so again, uh, for elements that belong to uh, Maven namespace, so this is a Maven uh, namespace, right? So here uh, you define a default namespace. So any element like a project. Uh, model version, version uh, properties, they all belong to this default namespace. Okay, so you don't have to actually have a prefix for this uh, this element. Okay, anything else? Uh, this one, uh, anything that belongs to this XML schema instances has to have XSI namespace. Anything that belongs to this uh, schema location uh, namespace, uh, XSD namespace. Oh, this is the schema location. It's not really a namespace things. Okay, right. Uh, so uh, the uh, anything, let's see if there is an XSI namespace element that are being used here. Uh, looks like we don't. It doesn't. Okay. All right. So this is another example where default namespace is used. Uh, this is a WSDL document. Here uh, we have uh, the. Uh, 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 let's see. That there is no. Oh yeah. So here, this is the uh, uh, default namespace. So. Anything that doesn't have a prefix belongs to this WSDL namespace. For example, definitions, types, and the message, port type, binding, they all belong to this default namespace. Any elements and attributes that belong to uh, other namespaces need to have a prefix. So for example, this is the case where 
this schema element belongs to XSD namespace. So this is the namespace that we defined. So this is XML namespace, XML schema namespace. Okay. So like a schema and import, those element should be prefixed with the XSD because they do not belong to this default namespace. Okay. Uh, the SOAP, so this is the SOAP namespace, so anything, any element and attributes that belong to this SOAP namespace should be prefixed with this, this SOAP, okay, so that is this case, uh, SOAP colon operation, so this operation element belongs to this namespace, okay. Alright, uh, schema namespace, so let me actually stop right here and uh, see if there are any questions. Okay, so let me uh, okay, so uh, schema namespaces. So types of namespaces. Uh, there is actually a concept of target namespace and uh, and source namespaces. And the target namespace is the namespace for XML schema document itself. Okay, so I'm going to explain what it means using example in the following slide. So if you don't understand what I'm talking about, don't worry about it. Uh, source namespaces are namespaces external to XML schema documents. So these are typical uh, namespaces that we have seen so far. So you know when we actually see these namespaces, these are all uh, the uh, the uh, source namespaces, meaning this defines the namespaces. Uh, the uh, the uh, that you are going to use uh, elements from those namespaces. Okay, so that is typical uh, the namespaces we are talking about. Okay, all right. So target namespace, as I said before, it is a namespace that is going to be assigned to the schema that you are going to create. Uh, so we haven't actually seen the schema yet. You know, we have seen XML document instance, but we haven't seen the XML schema. Uh, that defines the syntax of those XML document instances. So uh, when you are creating XML schema in which you are going to define elements and attributes, you have to provide a namespace, right? That is the target namespace. So the names of elements and attributes defined in a schema are said to belong to its target namespace. Okay. Again, if you are confused about the concept, don't worry about it. I'm going to use an example to emphasize this aspect. Okay. Uh, it is a namespace a document instance uses to access the types it declares. Okay? So what it means is this. So in this case, these are source namespaces, right? meaning they actually provide the namespace uh, these elements that you are using belongs to. However, when you are creating XML schema of this you know, names, the schema of this particular namespace, XML uh, schema, uh, that is the target namespace that needs to be defined for that, right? I mean, okay, so maybe I'm actually confusing you, so let me actually move on to a different example. And you will actually have a better understanding once I use um, example later on. So each schema has one target namespace and possibly many source namespaces, okay? All right? Just remember this, and I'm going to actually use an example. All right, so I'm going to use an example. This is a sample schema. So again, we haven't really learned the concept of schema. A schema is where you are defining your own elements. Okay. So in this case, we have defined XML schema, and uh, this is a target namespace. So this is the namespace these guys, you are defining these elements, element and simple type restriction, uh, the, uh, I'm sorry, the, the, the ones that you are defining. So this is the, in, so you are defining uh, three elements here, invoice number, product, and product code. So these are the elements that you are defining in your XML schema so that somebody else can actually use it. Now, before these elements could be used by XML document instance of this XML schema, you have to provide target namespace. Okay, so this target namespace is going target namespace is going to be used uh, in XML document instance when they're actually using these elements. Okay, uh, I'm going to actually talk about this uh, this uh, this example one more time when we actually cover XML schema. So we haven't you know we haven't really talked about XML schema yet. So it might be a little bit premature for me to talk about this concept uh, yet, uh, but uh, you know, let me actually repeat this one later on when we talk about XML schema. All right. So, so this is an explanation. 
So the target namespace name is this. Okay. So this is a target namespace. Okay. And which contains invoice number, product ID, and product code names in the namespace. So when we are defining, oops, when we are defining these three elements. Okay. So these elements are belonging to this target namespace that I define. Okay. Now, schema, this red colored things, schema, element, simple type, pattern, string, positive integer, they belong to source namespace of this guy. So, XML schema itself is XML document. So, it actually has to follow exactly the same uh, rules that any XML document has to follow, meaning it does have its own uh, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, namespaces. So, here it does define uh, the uh, source namespace, okay, or external namespace. So anything that belongs to this namespace, XML schema, has to be prefixed with XSD. So this element, simple type, restriction, and pattern, they all belong to this XML schema namespace. So this is an example of source namespace. Okay. Now this is another example of source namespace, right? But you happen to you can see these are the same thing. Target namespace and this one. And we are gonna actually talk about that in the following slide. So the target namespace also happens to be one of the source namespaces because the name product code is used in defining others. Now, in this case, when we are defining product element, we happen to use another simple type in this document, in this case, product code. Right? So what we are doing in this case is that we are actually using product code as source namespace Okay, so that's the reason we actually define uh, another source namespace or external namespace using ACC. Okay, and uh, but they happen to be the same. Okay, because uh, you know this product code is in the same namespace. All right, importing a schema with a schema location. Now this is example. Uh, this is the same schema with no schema location. So there is no schema information uh, here, okay? Because this is the schema itself, okay? So that is the explanation. Why schema? No, what is what is a schema location? Is a schema file uses a several source namespaces, but how does it know where to get the schema files of source namespaces? So here we are using these two source namespaces, okay? Which means there has to be some XML schema document reflecting uh, defining elements defined in these namespaces but we don't see any schema location of these two why okay the reason is this so example 2 same schema in example 1 does not need to specify locations of source schema files the reason is this schema uh, the, uh, the this external uh, the uh, uh, namespace is well known uh, the uh, namespace Okay, so there is no any XML parser knows where to go to get the uh, the uh, the uh, uh, schema uh, schema file of this. Okay, so there is no need to actually specify it. And this one, because it's actually in the same namespace, you can see this is the same names, namespace, so it knows you know where to go because it's inside the same uh, same XML schema file. Okay, so basically that's the reason you don't have to specify schema location. Okay, so this is an explanation. So for the overall schema of schemas, so this is the schema of schemas. You need not you need not specify location because it's well known. Meaning every parser should know where to get the schema of that uh, particular the uh, namespace. And uh, for the source namespace of this, you do not need to specify a location since it also happens to be the same of the target name of the target namespace that it belong that is being defined in this file. So it knows where to go because it's the same file. Okay. However, suppose if you are using another uh, namespace, in this case, so we are using another namespace. This is a custom namespace called the partnerstore.com parts catalog. Okay? And we define the, uh, this source namespace. Now, this is, you have to actually provide a schema file okay? using the uh, schema location. Okay? All right? Uh, because uh, you have to provide a schema file for this particular namespace. 
Okay, so th that is an explanation. So part namespace needs to be imported using import declaration element whose schema location attribute specifies the location of the file it contains the schema because it is not a well-known namespace like XML schema and it is not a target namespace. Okay. All right, so hopefully that gives you a sense of uh, the uh, what the schema namespace is all about. Uh, I'm going to actually cover this one one more time uh, after we cover schema, XML schema. Okay, so if you are a little bit fuzzy on this concept, uh, don't worry about it. Uh, in the meantime, let's see if we have any questions before we go to the lab exercise. So let me. All right, so this is the documentation and. Uh, here we are going to create XML document from purchase order XSD schema and uh, then we are going to create XML document from Maven Palm schema. Okay, So uh, the uh, start NetBeans, okay? so you can use any version of NetBeans. Uh, I expect you guys to use the latest version uh, which is 7.4. Okay? Uh, you want to open dummy Java uh, application NetBeans project. So this is just dummy project in which we are going to just create the uh, in XML files. Okay. So the project is already provided. So all you have to do is just open the project. Okay. Uh, so basically, you are going to uh, open the project. So let me just. File, open project and uh, it's, it's on the samples directory so go to the same hands-on lab in this case uh, it is uh, hands-on lab okay so in my case uh, so it is WS XML namespace and underneath there is the samples NetBeans directory right so just open this dummy Java app open the project like this okay and uh, we are going to see dummy Java app being displayed. Okay. And uh, there are two XSD files, uh, meaning XML schema files. So if you take a look at the purchase order.xml file, okay. So if you take a look at the uh, uh, here, uh, purchase order.xml file. So this is XML schema file, okay. And uh, then you can see. Uh, it does have uh, the namespaces of XML schema. Here, uh, it does have a prefix. So any elements or attributes that belongs to XML schema should be prefixed with this guy. Okay. So annotation, documentation, and things like that, and element, and all that stuff. Okay. Now let's see if there is any uh, the uh, uh, so. Uh, the XML schema has to have a target namespace. So basically you know the any XML schema has to have a single target namespace and multiple uh, source namespaces so here we have a two source namespaces this guy and this guy okay and one single target namespace this guy so any elements that we are defining like uh, the uh, purchase order ship to and the name street and all these things they belong to this target namespace Okay, so when XML document instance is actually using, uh, you know, the uh, these elements like a name, ship to, purchase order, they have to specify this guy as one of their source namespaces. Okay. All right, so here we are going to actually create the XML document. So you say new XML document, and just name it as my purchase order XML document. Okay, and uh, you know we are going to actually specify XML schema constraint document. Okay and uh, we provide uh, XML schema okay and uh, then we are going to uh, you know the uh, use one or more so here we are going to actually the uh, you know this is the uh, uh, the uh, um, uh, root yeah so basically we actually use the root and prefix so you know this is the namespace that we are going to use uh, in our XML document instance okay so you know what happens is now we actually have XML uh, document instance. So here you are going to see it uses the uh, uh, the uh, um, uh, it actually uses the schema location, right? And uh, then it's using this guy purchase order. This is the target namespace that we define in XML schema of this guy, right? But 
because it's using it, it has to actually import it. I mean, it, I'm sorry, it has to use it as the external or source namespace. Okay, so hopefully you guys actually get the sense of how XMA schema and document instance of that XMA schema is actually being related through these namespaces. Okay, all right. Uh, exercise two is something similar. Okay, so here we are creating uh, the XML document instance. Okay, and next, and uh, and basically the you know we basically create uh, the XML document, and again this is the uh, uh, the uh, prefix we are going to use. Okay, and this is the uh, namespace of uh, Maven, and uh, here we are going to create again. Uh, the XML document instance where you have to actually specify the uh, the uh, uh, in this case schema location of this the uh, uh, Maven uh, schema XML file. So here you are basically using uh, this guy as uh, the uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the the namespace where all the elements uh, that belongs to. So anything that the uh, you, any if you're using any elements that belong to this namespace, you have to actually prefix it my palm. Okay. All right. So uh, I'm going to give you guys about uh, 15 minutes to try this exercise. Okay.